Jeffra is a world downstairs. Um, so if you haven't seen the show, go back and see the, all the installation once they are switched on. Her project, she's going to explain it later, but her project is about tourism in, in and between Limassol and Haifa. So the first like basic easy question is where did you get inspiration for this this film? I know you are from Haifa and now you live in Limassol, but still I would like to know how you got the idea. Um, should I say something first about the pictures yes, yes. running? So uh, the photos, all the photos are taken by my iPhone and it's during the time, it, it, it's not done for the project specifically, it's just whenever I'm on the beach, I'm, I just take a photo. And then uh, we were talking, and then of course there's some photos that I took for, uh, for this project. Uh, like this one, for example, this is from, this is in Haifa. This is Haifa's port. And as you can see, it's also very, it's in the neighborhood. So you can see these ships from your house, from your apartment, from the window. And um, I just like, in the last few weeks, as I told you, I was looking through my phone and I noticed that all, almost all the photos that I have uh, in my phone are with some kind of a, in the background, uh, some ship uh, um, showing, even if I don't intend to. So, so my inspirations for, the, uh, for this project or for, I think, any project that I do is, you know, the fact that I'm Palestinian with an Israeli citizenship, uh, with an Israeli passport, and you know, with everything coming uh, with that, I know it's, um, I, I don't really limit myself because of that, but I think this is my motive for, for all of the work, just because I feel this, I feel this deep, um, maybe responsibility, uh, duty, that I have to speak about it all the time. And um, even if it's not in direct ways, uh, like in this project, it's not, it is, talking about it, but not directly. So as a um, Palestinian um, with a Israeli citizenship, I'm born into this all, of, a lot of definitions, louder. Uh, so I'm defined in, in a lot of different ways. So I'm an Arab Israeli by, um, um, for the state of Israel. This is how the state defines me. I'm a Druze are a Israeli, so I'm defined also by my religion or a Christian Israeli or just Arab if you're a Muslim, because all Arabs are Muslims. And, uh, and I'm a 48er, so I'm one of the Palestinians who stayed, survived in 1948 for the Palestinians. This is how the Arab world defined us. And none of these definitions I chose for myself. So, and I, I was, you know, you learn very early that um, this is not you. Uh, so you don't choose this definition and then you start trying to figure out like how do I identify myself or how do I define myself. And you know, through this pr process, you also understand um, how society look at you, how um, Israel, the state looking at you, how institutions, when you start working or um, going to the university and really interact and uh, meet other people uh, because I don't know if you know but um, uh, in Israel Arabs are living in Ar uh, Palestinian villages uh, and these villages usually um, with the majority of a, some kind of a religion so you have Christian uh, Palestinian villages and then Muslim Palestinian villages and then Druze Palestinian so it's very very divided and sometimes you go through life without interacting even or meeting uh, people from different, uh, you know, that are different uh, of, uh, than you. So, um, and um, you see, so you become, you become aware of uh, this, uh, the, mo the political motive, uh, 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 motivation of this separation, you know, like a divide and conquer uh, policy. 
and then you start fi fighting that in, in some ways. And also me being from born and raised uh, through my childhood years in Dalet al Carmel, which is a Druze village near Haifa, uh, with a, with, it's a very touristic uh, village as well with a local market. Um, local market, let's say, because there's nothing local about that market. But, <laughs> but it's very, you know, very touristic. And I was working there during my teenage years in the summer as a summer job. And then, you know, if I, I feel like it was then when I first um, uh, felt that I'm the subject of Orientalism. Like people are and it's local or uh, tourism usually in this village. So it's Israelis, so it's other Palestinians coming into the village and still like you're the subject of uh, Orientalism because people are coming to um, get to know this culture, you know, or, or you know, and it's most of this uh, market is filled with uh, souvenir shops and, you know, uh, shops that are selling products from made in China mostly, yeah but uh, like a very uh, uh, somehow considered to be Druze. And like, I don't know why and how, because when I did ask my grandma, she said, no, like we don't do that. It's not what we did. Uh, this what is did not- they What did they say, food, uh, uh, food? Well, food, you know, it's the traditional uh, uh, Palestinian food, falafel, shawarma, and so on. And it's uh, now that, the national even Israeli food so it's uh, so you have that but it's also um, you know religious things things that connected to religious but also like um, weaved things um, craft uh, goods um, um, uh, carpets uh, pillows whatever so it's <laughs> things like that and then living in Haifa uh, for most of my life, also in a Palestinian neighborhood in Haifa, because Haifa is a very diverse city, but it's very divided. So you have a large Palestinian community living in Haifa, but it's very, very divided. So you have the Palestinian neighborhoods, and then it's, it's also the neighborhoods facing the port. And then, uh, um, as you go up the mountain, the uh, neighborhoods are richer and it's less and less Palestinians living there. And until you go up to the rich area where only Jewish live and uh, you can buy, uh, even if you can afford it, because it's mostly gated neighborhoods. Uh, and it's usually European Jewish living there. <laughs> so, uh, living like in this space and also knowing how emotionally attached uh, or how the relationship between Palestinians and the sea is very emotional and very complex. Um, all of those were my motives for, for, for this work because when I came here, first I felt here in Lemassol, I felt that it's a very familiar place. Uh, it feels the same. It looks the same almost as in as Haifa, uh, and it's. Uh, but uh, now I'm the tourist, so now I'm the outsider looking at it, and but still I could feel at home. Like I don't know how to even uh, explain that. And then looking at the sea and knowing that Haifa is just across the sea, so it's just it's Lemassol is facing Haifa, so you feel this connection. And I knew like I had to do something with, with that. Also being from, uh, from, from Haifa, living just in front of facing the port. But okay, it's strange to me what you said that the Palestinians get the sea and then the Israeli go up. Ah, yeah, the like, sea. I would expect that the rich people would want to Well, because the these are the historical Palestinian neighborhoods. But so prevent Israeli no, no, it doesn't. So <laughs> of course not. Now they are developing it, and of course the prices are going high, and slowly Palestinians are moving out. But um, Haifa is surrounded by sea, 
So you have the port area and then the poor neighborhoods, the Palestinian neighborhoods, and then from the other side, when you go up the mountain, you go down, and from the other side, you have the sea with the access, with the actual access to the sea. So the Palestinian neighborhoods, neighborhoods are facing the sea, but they have no access to it, you no physical no, access. No beach. No beach. So you have the port, you have a, a military base, and then you have the train that is blocking the sea. So you can't even reach it. And then from the other side, where the um, Jewish neighborhood are, fa are facing the sea, you have access to the beach. So it's like that. OK. Yeah. And the, the, big, the big ship, like, this is Limassol. This is Limassol, yes. But the big, uh, the big uh, cruise ship, they go to the? To the port. So the two to the Palestinian. Yes. So the, um, the tourists coming out of the cruise ships, they're interacting with Palestinians. And they're going to pa Palestinians' uh, neighborhood, to the Palestinians' local markets, and so on. And they receive it as, this is Israel, so, for example. So because these are the touristic uh, areas, because these are the historical areas, and so on. So and you have the markets there. and. That's something so, we see in your, in, your, in your film, a bit this confusion of, of people think, like, thinking this is Israel. And, is it annoying or for it is, Palestinians? To it is, I, I think for, for Palestinians in general, general it is uh, very annoying because it's, uh, you have to explain over and over again, no, this is a Palestinian never. But for business owners, even Palestinians, it's, they welcome it, like, yes, it's a very profitable uh, thing. So um, they sell their story, you know? So when uh, uh, tourists come by, they, yes, they sell, yeah, we are Arab, we're Israeli Arab, uh, we make falafel, we make hummus, and they, <laughs> they, <laughs> and they sell this, like, lovely story of the, this city of, uh, Haifa as the uh, city, the model of coexistence. And look at us here, we all live together. My neighbors are Jewish and we love each other and so on. So, but it's business. Okay, and how big are the, are the cruise ships? We, we've seen one of them, the one that was, how big are they? Because when thinking about cruise ships, so I, I live in Italy and I, I get to read the press and I go sometimes to Venice and Although they are not allowed to go in, in the center anymore, but they might come back. Yeah. When I think about cruise ship, I see this huge ship that were really, you know, they used to come in the center of Venice and they were really dwarfing the city. They were much bigger than, than all the buildings. Is it like that when they arrived? Some of them, father, yeah, know? yeah. Some, some of them are gi like, like giants, like they are covering the whole uh, port and even through the window, uh, my the window of my apartment where I li was living in a third in the third floor, I was this uh, cruise ship was covering. When they come, they were covering my view. So how intense is the traffic between Limassol and, and Haifa? How many sh cruise ships per week? Or it's most? at least one a week. Uh, in the high season, so it can go into three a week. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to say something about the project in two worlds? Do you think we've covered it already? Do you want to say something about it? So yeah, the film. Um, it's basically the view from uh, Lemassol to Haifa and then from Haifa to Lemassol. Uh, facing, I'm facing myself through my... Um, camera and uh, I was also because I had some challenges with this um, project my first idea was to get on a cruise ship and to travel with the tourists and to uh, to visit Haifa as a tourist um, uh, that didn't go well because the only cruise ship company uh, that was affordable actually that was operating uh, in, Limas, in Cyprus and, sent, and 
um, doing these trips from Damascus to Haifa stopped working this year. I don't know what happened, but uh, they're not operating anymore. And then every other cruise ship that I wanted to go on was extremely expensive, so it wasn't financially, um, I wasn't financially open, able to do that. Uh, and then f I didn't do the uh, reverse trip from Haifa to Lemaso, which was also very expensive, but I didn't want to be on that cruise ship. <laughs> and so I didn't do that. And then, okay, I said, okay, I'm, I want to interview people going out uh, from the uh, cruise ship. And I just started, you know, waiting for people going out outside the gate because the port in Haifa is gated, and also here in Lemassol. Uh, so you can go in, you have to have a security clearance and uh, so on. So I was standing outside waiting for people to go out and asking them, so what do you think about Haifa, where you come from? What do you think about Lemassol? Uh, if they were coming from Lemassol, back to home. Uh, and I did that here as well. And um, uh, very fast I, I realized that all the answers will, will, are going to be the same. So all, all the answers are the same. So it's about the food, it's about how friendly the locals are, and it's about you know, the views, the beach, uh, and even tourists from Haifa that are living in a coastal city very much like Lemassol, very much like them, they have the same answers. So they, have, so they say the seafood is delicious, and we have seafood in Haifa. And they say <laughs> the beaches are beautiful and they're living by the sea. So what did you gain from this experience? This is very typical to this kind of tourism because it's only a three-day trip. So you travel with the cruise ship, you get in Limassol or in Haifa, you walk around, you eat something, and then back to the ship to the next destination. And this is uh, the way. So it's a very fast and it's very commercialized and it's very it's only about eating and uh, being entertained well another question i had um, when i was thinking about your project no first i i must say that since since i've seen your project i realized so my mother i have to send her postcards and i realized that what I write to my mother in my postcard is exactly the same as stories, your <laughs> stories in your field. So now, like when I was writing a postcard for my for my mother from Limassol, like I started, the weather is amazing, it's very hot, and the food. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, I have probably my, my last question to you, and then if anyone has a, has a question, uh, is. You know, when I, when I think about, about the sea, about these, these crazy trips, I'm also thinking about climate change and the Mediterranean getting hotter and the sea level rise and this shit being so polluting. So is yeah. it something you, you notice when you talk about people here or in Alpha or during the course of your, of your work? Or is it a concern of yours? It is. And... Um it's something that um, I thought about before even approaching this project. Uh, I don't know if I really uh, examined that in the, in the work. I think I did only by tracking the traffic. Yeah. So um, while sitting there and you know, logging in every day and counting the ships, um, that are sailing, moving, and quickly, like tracking them, and it will it would quickly be like a, a form the uh, even the map of the sea. Uh, it will form the map of the uh, the whole area just by you know tracking. So they go everywhere, they go everywhere, and they sometimes cover island. Like if you're tracking them, there's so many dots that they cover the island like this some dots uh, with each other, that, that's Malta. Malta is also a very, very small island. So, and you have so many cruise ships going there. So I think, so I, I thought, definitely I thought about that while doing that. And I was re very concerned and I was tracking almost only cruise ships. So imagine how many other vessels are there sailing around the sea. It's, uh, yeah.
It's very concerning. And then whenever I take a big picture of the sea here, just like I want a nice view picture, I don't know, to send to the family. I have this boat somewhere, like going, like ruining the whole picture. This one. This is uh, in a Governor, near the uh, power station. For now, I was thinking with a friend in uh, Yaffa, and uh, we are going to do something together. Maybe we're still discussing it, but definitely, like. Um, not only going to be tracking uh, through my laptop uh, uh, ships, I want to be this time or for the next steps more there engaged physically. Uh, just because what I said earlier about this very emotional also attachment and relationship between Palestinians at the sea. Uh, you can see, like, for example, uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, mention that. Um, the project of Ruba Salame uh, there in the beginning, it's talking about Tantura. Tantura is a village, a used to be a Palestinian village that was ethnically cleansed in 48 and um, it's now non-existing and it's a touristic uh, spot. Israeli. Israeli touristic spot. It's very much near Haifa uh, also. And uh, the beach, the parking spot is on a, a massive um, uh, rave where they uh, just killed people and Palestinians in 48. And there is a documentary about it that was released last year named Tantura and I think it's a very powerful documentary. So that also, so in 48 Israel just, uh, you know, wiped all Palestinian um, coastal villages and uh, built their, you know, uh, settlements. And also, um, a lot of Palestinians from Haifa, from Yaffa, and from Akko, the big port cities, were deported through the sea to Lebanon. So they were put on boats and just deported to Lebanon. So you have that, and you don't have access also even from your own neighborhood to the sea right now. And the, uh, a non-existent possibility for, West, for Palestinians from the West Bank to even reach to access the sea. So it's a very emotional uh, relationship. So I'm going to do something with that, still about cruise ships, but somehow um, more expanding about th that aspect. Thank you. Thank you.